Thank you for being with me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This here, a very dangerous situation shaping up. This, uh, by the time you watch this, should be Hurricane Eric. Uh, it could rapidly intensify. It could get a lot stronger. We're talking about winds uh, that uh, could have some gusts, 120, 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers an hour even potentially higher in this, and then life-threatening rain. The southern coast of Mexico, I wanna begin there. I wanna zoom down there. I wanna go into the preps, the rain totals, what we're watching out for, the winds. I'll show you that in the core of this. And you can see these cloud tops really building up where you see the whites. That's a big concern to me as a meteorologist. I'm seeing very tall cloud tops wrapping around this. In this area, very warm water. But above us, uh, we're seeing low wind shear, and that's a bad thing. We like wind shear that knocks the tops of these things apart. We don't have that in this case, and that's why this is going to continue to intensify as it lifts up toward the coast, the southern coast of Mexico, watching over toward Guata uh, Guatemala, parts of Central America, as well as the uh, flooding will be concerned. I'll highlight all of that, but this is going to make landfall tomorrow. The impacts, they have started already with the heavy rain, so this is very important. Please spread the word about this. I appreciate that. I want to get the correct word out across uh, Mexico. Anywhere from, and this is a pretty broad area because of the rain in it, how widespread it's going to be and how much of a slow mover. Uh, Zewantaneo, back through Acapulco, and especially near uh, Puerto Escondido, and then all the way down through the border uh, with Guatemala. Take those full hurricane preparations because either it's going to be the wind, the rain, or both of those. And we're talking about those high impacts, especially with the winds around uh, Puerto Escondido, where this is really going to work its way on shore. And we're looking at some of the rain totals that could be 400 millimeters of rain or 16 inches of rain could be more in spots if this thing slows up and that is life-threatening no doubt mudslides are going to be significant uh, in and around where this comes on shore and with the bands that are wrapping around it so this will make landfall by tomorrow the warnings are up but again a broad area along the coast so don't just focus on the cone that's why I don't love this map and the cone that's uh, always put out all the way back through the coast of Guatemala I can't stress that enough we're gonna have a lot of rain wrapping in back behind it at least least tropical storm conditions in here, but that southern coast of Mexico, that's what we're watching. And you can see here is the issue, right? You see all these squiggly lines, the computer models. Yes, once this makes landfall tomorrow, it is going to weaken, but then it just rides along. This is a bad scenario. Rides along the southern coast. You see it here for yourself. That means uh, days and days of just torrential tropical downpours. I showed you that satellite image. There's so much rain, so much moisture in this hurricane, especially because it's a slow mover and it's intensifying as it moves on shore. Yes, it'll weaken, but the rain is going to be so very life-threatening. So again, thank you for getting the word out about this. Sometimes this area is very overlooked, not on this uh, channel. Now you see here, as we go forward, just over the next 12 to 24 hours, really the next 12 hours, it is gonna shoot up in intensity potentially near category three strength, most likely a strong category, uh, strong category one or category two. You see the yellow and then the orange would be category two. This red shading or pinkish shading would be category three. Either way, rapid strengthening. Sometimes it strengthens a little bit more, a little bit less, but it is going to continue to strengthen as it moves on shore. I'm so highly concerned about all of these areas right in here with the rain. So let me show you this and then dissect the winds in this and then show you the rain. So here's Puerto Escondido. This is where it's generally gonna come on shore, but look what happens. That's why I'm mentioning El, El Salvador, Guatemala, the rain bands. Here's the core of this thing back behind it, just shooting all the way and even eventually up toward Campeche, there could be some rain. So just cores of heavy rain wrapping around it. That's why I don't love the cone. Uh, that is uh, put out. We need to make those full preparations all in that area that I showed you a couple maps ago. And then you see here by tomorrow morning, here's the time frame. This is the core of it. Such a slow mover coming on shore near uh, Puerto Escondido or just off toward the west. If it stays over water a little bit longer, this can make landfall a little bit closer to Acapulco. But either way, we'll get some really heavy rain working in and those bands of rain just filter in. And then this is tomorrow by the time we hit early afternoon. Yes, they'll be weakening with the winds. 
not the rain. I, I just, I can't stress that enough. Torrential rain. Look at this by Thursday night, tomorrow night. They want to nail. We start to pick up on the rain. This is really torrential stuff. And still on the backside, filtering in all of that moisture up toward the Bay of Campeche. And then as we work our way even into Friday, yeah, it's not a hurricane at this point, but a huge moisture feed because of the angle this is taking in the weakening over towards they want to nail. It is going to work in that really heavy rain from the south and just pump that in and wrap that around, hit that higher terrain, mudslides a threat, incredible amounts of runoff with this. And that means we'll not only have the mudslides, incredibly dangerous rivers, river crossings, Please uh, take whatever precautions you can in this area uh, to uh, protect life, property, no doubt, uh, but to uh, protect uh, life because this is going to be rolling in as a strengthening system with a bad angle. Here are the wind speeds, kilometers an hour and miles per hour. Now this is probably a little underdone. Uh, that's not a good thing. There's some yellow in here. Those would be winds around 145 kilometers an hour or 90 miles per hour. Most likely it'll be stronger. And then sometimes, this is why I don't always rely on the computer models. This is already, the model itself is getting impacted by the terrain, uh, shows uh, some weakening. Obviously once it hits land, we'll get that weakening. And then this should roll on shore uh, as we swing back toward uh, near uh, Acapulco uh, and then uh, just off toward the east and then roll on shore as we work our way into Thursday with eventually some of that uh, weakening with the winds, but not the rain. Look at this rain that's going to pump in. This is off my scale and the scale goes up to 250 millimeters of rain. That's why I mentioned upwards of 400 millimeters of rain, 16, 17, 18 inches possible. This is all going to sweep in. Here's Puerto Escondido swing back toward Acapulco where we're looking at the potential of 200 millimeters of rain, but there's that core in the yellow, at least 250 right in through here and then that will kind of ride its way right through here and you see it kind of pivot its way. Yes, it'll start to lose some of its punch, but this is uh, just, uh, the, you don't want to see a map like this uh, with an intensifying system taking this angle as it starts to work on shore. A life-threatening situation. We are all on this channel thinking of you if you're in the southern coast of Mexico. Uh, keep us posted if you can in the comments. I will be watching it nonstop as this continues to intensify and then kind of take that turn a little bit more back toward the west. On the back side of it, filtering in all of this moisture. I've been highlighting this for weeks in Central America. That flood threat would be around. Watching a tropical wave moving into Trinidad and Tobago that we talked about. I mentioned as we go through the end of the week, the rain chance will go up again. Spotty shower storm. We've had a couple big ones around Jamaica over the last few days. Now out here in the tropical Atlantic, these tropical waves not doing a lot. Remember, there's a lot of dust and dry air out there, but as the tropical waves start to stack up, it does continue to increase moisture back through the Caribbean. So one wave here, a couple more that will be moving in, not seeing signs of development, but no doubt watching some of the rain that will be increasing and that flood threat. So I covered this over toward the southern coast of Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, watching some bands of rain working in. We just see that moisture feed that will be with us. Some of us, not a lot, others getting a ton of rain, scattered areas of rain. If we get a storm, say Jamaica, Haiti, the DR, Puerto Rico, while they won't be widespread, they could be pretty aggressive. It is so hot. That means there's a lot of energy out there. And then you see as we work our way into tomorrow, uh, no doubt watching Eric here, but look on the backside, some of that rain, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Providencia, San Andres, and then we swing back toward Belize, that extra rain. There are those scattered areas of rain, Guyana, Trinidad, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada. We'll monitor that rain chance picking up through the end of the week. This year is by later in the day on Friday, and you can see as these tropical waves move in, southeastern Caribbean, we're a little more active. Watch Watching the wet weather, days and days of that through Central America. And then I want to show you this, how much of this moisture lifts up to the north. We'll get into that in just a moment, but this takes us through our Friday forecast. So let's swing into that, watching this area down here. Another severe weather outbreak in parts of the U.S., another tornado threat, right where you're seeing these brighter colors. Watching Illinois, Missouri, for example, seeing some of those uh, rain uh, areas working their way toward New England and toward the Atlantic region of Canada, eastern seaboard, mid-Atlantic, seeing some of those heavier storms tomorrow. There's some of the rain. Now, it's not going to, because it's taking, and I showed you a day or two ago, a little bit more of a westerly turn versus due north into the Gulf. Uh, we're looking at some of that moisture. Yes, eventually kind of getting tied in, but not a, a direct kind of surge of moisture, if you will, into Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. But as we go forward, let me just take you through the weekend zoom here, and you can see, let's just zoom all the way into a Sunday. You can see 
see some of the moisture with the next systems just kind of getting tied in, kind of fed into that. So we will keep an eye on some increased rain. But again, Mexico City, we'll see that rain chance going up. We'll cover that in just a moment with the rain totals, interior sections uh, as well of uh, Mexico. No doubt there are those extremely high dangerous seas, five, six, seven uh, meters uh, in some spots as this continues to wind up. And then just sliding through the weekend, we'll see that chop through the uh, south central portions of the uh, Caribbean, and it's been windy too. We've had that persistent flow. Some of us have just been uh, getting knocked around, even with sunny skies, with those winds. So I'll be watching your comments. Keep me posted whether you got the rain or not. Love to know what's uh, going on where you are. So hit or miss storms in this sector. Cuba will have a few uh, hit or miss storms, and then we'll do the same thing as we work our way through Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Haiti, the DR, Puerto Rico, uh, St. Croix, Tortola, uh, St. John, St. Thomas, passing shower. There's some of the dust in this area. If you have some breathing issues that could be a little bit worse the next few days with some of that dust around St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, St. Bart, St. Martin, hit or miss showers, but southeastern Caribbean, that's where it's going to pick up. So we'll monitor that flood threat that will be increasing as we get back through Trinidad over toward parts of Guyana and Suriname once again with these tropical waves moving in, kind of low riders. So we'll see how much of that rain filters in, but a heads up, the flood threat will get higher in the southeastern Caribbean late week into the upcoming weekend. And then this here, no doubt, out is a mess. Parts of Honduras, you see how some parts, maybe we get 25 millimeters of rain. Other spots with that feed coming in off the Caribbean, we could have some areas over 100 millimeters of rain. But in this area, watching out for the dangerous flooding, and then this here, just as significant as it gets, this moisture feeding up in and around Mexico City. We have been wet the last, uh, I'd say about a uh, week and a half to two and a half weeks. We're going to continue with that flood threat. Some of that moisture feeding in from the Bay of Campeche into the east coast of Mexico here. Not as much as we get over toward Cancun uh, or Campeche or Merida. Most of that action again off toward the west. And then Texas, we'll see how much moisture tries to feed in, but not seeing a big surge of moisture lifting up to the north. This in here, some spotty showers, heavier weather though, parts of Arkansas over toward a Tennessee, hit or miss back through the Carolinas. So an isolated shower storm the next few days in Jamaica, 20% chance the next three days in the Cayman Islands, 60% chance today in Trinidad, because again, some of us may not get rain, others may get dumped on, right? That new tropical wave is sliding in, so monitoring that flood threat, especially southern end of uh, Trinidad, 50% chance of some spotty showers around in Barbados today, and we have a 50% chance as well. St. Lucia, about a 40% chance by tomorrow. 30 to 40% chance in Grenada over the next couple of days. 40 to 50% chance St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So southeastern Caribbean starting to get more active, holding on to about a 40% chance in Martinique and about a 30% chance for the day ahead in Dominica. Rain chance 30 to 40% in Guadeloupe the next couple days. A little bit of that dust mixed in. Rain chance lower though, Antigua Barbuda, just a 20% chance. A 20% chance. St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, low chance of rain. Same thing in Anguilla and St. Bart's. Uh, that rain chance will stay on the low side. Sorry, I don't know why that map snuck in there. 10% chance of rain. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia, 20% chance on Friday. Isolated thunderstorms. Again, not widespread in Puerto Rico, but some hit or miss storms that will be possible. 10 to 20 percent chance. That's all. U.S and British Virgin Islands. 30% chance of some passing showers and storms through the uh, Bahamas. Turks and Caicos, though, rain chance very limited, and there is that dust that will be around the next several days, some of that dust. 30% chance of some isolated storms in the Dominican Republic. It is so hot. Same thing in Haiti. Haiti, rain chance very minimal today. Quick little passing shower maybe for a couple of us. Belize, though, watching out for some of that rain filtering in. It will stay active. Some areas of flooding will be possible. Aruba, Curacao and Bonaire, that rain chance holding at about 20%. There's the increased rain coming at us in Guyana and Suriname, as I mentioned, especially along the coast, uh, northern sections. We'll have that better chance of the flooding around, the higher chance of the flooding over the next few days leading into the weekend. 30 to 40% chance of rain in Cuba, 80% chance the next couple of days, Costa Rica and Panama. Watching out for some of the bands of rain, parts of Nicaragua, the flooding that we've been highlighting. Same thing in Honduras that we have been highlighting. And no doubt watching Guatemala and El Salvador for that high flood threat, especially the closer you are to Eric. And then this moisture just enhances the rain around Mexico City. We're up to an 80% chance tomorrow and again on Friday. Just a 30, maybe 40% chance through the Yucatan Peninsula. 40 to 50% chance in northern Colombia. A 60% chance by tomorrow in northern Venezuela as it builds through the end of the week. In Bermuda, we have some showers around at 
times, uh, but not a high chance of rain. So all eyes on Eric as it moves into Mexico. That slow go today with the official landfall for tomorrow. The Central America flood threat, those new tropical waves coming in and watching that southeastern Caribbean getting more active. So thank you for getting the word out. Hopefully it kind of reaches into uh, Mexico. Uh, preps need to get done as soon as possible. I know we all have different means, uh, but uh, just to get the word out, that's kind of the first thing. So thank you for doing that. Have a good rest of your day.